In your latest book, The Chemistry of Connection, you seem to define five areas of connection yes. that we, we really need to look at if we're going to be happy and healthy, ultimately. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I was wondering, is that kind of a summation of all your experience thus far that you have defined these five connections? Well, I think so. And also, I mean, the human body actually has five cavities, this is a fact. So we have the, um, we, you know, we have the uh, pelvic cavity, which is where all our sex organs and reproductive system is. And I relate that to our sexual and sensual zone of life. Great glass of wine, sex, music, you know, we like that. Then there's the physical zone. We have an abdominal cavity. It's to do with digesting. It's all our digestive organs. So it's like the nourishment we get from the earth, from food. And you know, that's the zone of nutrition, which I've kind of been in for the last 30 years. We then have the thoracic cavity of our lungs and our heart, which is the exchange of oxygen and the blood and so on. So you know, the heart is so important. And now we're learning that there are tons of neuronal connections between the heart and the brain. And the heart has an electromagnetic field that extends for about six feet. The brain doesn't. So it suggests that my state and your state, you know, we have an effect upon each other. So there's that coming from the heart more than just coming from the head. Uh, so, you know, we're told everything is in the brain, uh, but I think it's vastly overrated. And funnily enough, I do an exercise in my workshop. I ask everyone to close their eyes and point to themselves. And almost 99 out of 100 will point straight to the heart. And very rarely you get someone pointing here, even though this is where we see, and we're told that this is where we are at. So then there's the cranial cavity of our brain. That's the intellectual that's your kind of wisdom, intuition, and so on. And then finally, there's the spiritual realm. And in the body, we have the vertebral cavity that runs along the spine. So it's kind of the unifying principle. And so I believe that we, human beings, we are spiritual, intellectual, emotional, physical, and sexual, sensual beings. And to be a fully expressive human being, you kind of got to be firing on all, the, all of those cylinders. So I guess having spent a lot of time on the physical and the nutritional, and a fair amount on the mental intellectual, because my speciality is, is kind of in that area, I just felt a compulsion to talk about a bigger picture. And uh, that's, that's really my wish is that, I, I love it, there was a guy in India. He died in 1938, he was a holy man. And this is a true story, Zipruana. He knocks on the door of this old lady and he says, Zipruana, give me a bath and give me dinner. He washes his body, sits down, feeds his body, looks her straight in the eye and says, Zipruana is off now. You can cry all you like, but it won't make any difference. And he dies. So I believe optimum nutrition is an act of tremendous respect for this extraordinary body that we're born with. We are born with this consciousness. You don't need to find yourself. Just be yourself. I mean, you cannot lose that consciousness. We don't know what it is. We don't know where it came from, but we know we've got it. And there's no evidence that we lose it. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, this is really starting to engage fully. I understand that people have often, uh, you know, become disillusioned with religions. You know, there's been a lot of bad stuff done in the name of religions. Uh, but I don't think we need to sell ourselves short. So-called science hasn't got all the answers. And it's important that we ourselves need to explore what really floats our boat and makes life worth living.